Well, why did you have that there and we have this one? Well, welcome everyone to our service of parish communion in St. John's in It's so amazing to be here. Uh, we have had a service here, I think, since March, and it's wonderful to be here. So naturally, um, naturally, we, we this comes with a few technical hitches, and so uh, we're using a different camera because our, our main camera failed this morning, and so um, I'm having to look at you at Zoom. I'm on Zoom. Uh, slightly to the left of my um, of the altar. Um, so I'm sorry about that, but I'm sure you'll be very understanding. Um, it is also our harvest festival. And of course, normally we'd have the children and everyone bringing um, food up and cans and things to go on to the Winchester Church Night Shelter and the food bank, but unfortunately we can't do that this year. But um, Sarah has um, done some incredible um, well, they're not really flower arrangements, they're more sort of vegetable arrangements as well. So we've got, uh, we've got corn on the cob, we've got carrots, we've got red peppers, we've got red even, the red tree. <laughs> and um, we've got onions, uh, what else have we got? We've got, yeah, I did match on this side as well. Anything else that I do? Great, oh great, yes, we've got Amazing grapes, right? We've got grapes everywhere. So I've never seen this before, and I think it's absolutely wonderful. Thank you, sir, very much indeed. <laughs> so, um, as I've said to um, to people before, um, you obviously in the church with us will be standing and sitting and praying and worshiping and so forth as we can. We can't sing, unfortunately. So, but what we can do is we can melodically hum and we can also um, do lip syncing uh, which sort of feels almost as if you're singing uh, but uh, for you at home um, who are watching on zoom i would encourage you actually to stand when we're singing when i say please stand and uh, to sit and to sing please sing take the opportunity of being able to sing at home um, and go through the liturgy this um, as I've said before, that uh, worship is not a spectator sport, and um, to be engaged in this, and the reason that we're doing this on Zoom, is to enable you to be um, part of this, and um, to be engaged in worship um, of the creator of the universe, our Lord and Father. And so now we're going to invite the Holy Spirit uh, to be with us this morning. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Fill this building, fill this church building, fill our hearts, fill our homes. The Lord be with you. Now we're going to stand and um, hum or lip sync um, the hymn, Come Ye Thankful People. Thank you. 
our service when we remove, we seek to remove by repentance the obstacle which there is between us and God. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say to them, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life for the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say the colic prayer today. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the path of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we have our Bible. Hear the word our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew, chapter 22, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to you, O Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited. But they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away. One to his farm, another to his business while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets, and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see his, the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and a gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Praise be to you, O Christ. God, open my lips, I 
mind our hearts and minds as I may speak his words and we may hear and understand. Amen. Interesting story today, isn't it? Just a few short words. Patrick covered weddings, dinners, nice times with each other. Also killing and slaughter and burning down of cities. All in one reading. Well, let's see if we can make sense of it. Last time I preached, you may remember a few weeks ago, I was also talking about a bit from Matthew. And actually at the end, I said that that was actually a very simple parable. That was the one about uh, the chap who asked his uh, sons to go and work in the vineyard. And I said that was basically Jesus just saying, it's not what you say, it's what you do. But I think this one's a bit more important and it's a bit more complicated as well. It's about taking our work with God seriously. Now today's reading is about a marriage. Well, actually, probably two marriages, or maybe more, actually. Many academics believe that this is a composite, or marriage, of two stories that Matthew's put together. The first about the wedding where guests failed to arrive, and the second about one where guests were not wearing the right robes. And then there's thought to be the addition of a couple of extra verses. Verses six and seven, which say, while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them and killed them, the king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed these murderers, and burned their city. That sounds a little bit out of context when you read it, but it is thought by a lot of uh, theologians that this was actually a later edition from Matthew, and actually refers to the sacking of Jerusalem by the Romans in about AD 70, when they did exactly that. They sent the troops in, they destroyed many of the Jews, and they burnt the city and tore down the temple. However, having started off by saying that many made light of the invitation and just ignored it, it also seems a bit extreme that he then goes on to say that some of them killed his slaves. And this is also thought to have been a later addition by Matthew in reference uh, to a further problem. Another thing to think about is why, when a guest comes in off the street who's been invited, you then throw him out wearing the wrong robe. It doesn't really seem to make sense, does it? You've invited this chap in and then you're throwing him out. But it does make sense that they're originally two stories, and certainly would have made sense to the audience at the time. So let's have a look at that and see what it is. What we need to remember was that in those times, and they would all have understood this, anybody who was able to would have had a wedding robe of their own, some fine clothes that they wore for special occasions and weddings, to show off how wealthy they are. But it was also a tradition that a king would not do that. A king would send robes to everybody, so that when they turned up, they all looked similar. None of them stood out. And more importantly, None of them overshadowed the king. So to wear wedding robes was to show you had accepted the invitation. Now we know from verse 2 of this where Jesus is going with this, because in verse 2 he says, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. So he's setting us up sometimes. Just doesn't know what's going on at all. But here we know, he knows, very definitely know he's talking about the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus has invited us to the wedding. And we hear he's told his servants, or probably disciples, to go and invite everyone. So there's absolutely no doubt we're all included. This is an invitation to all of us to go and attend the wedding banquet with Jesus, with the Father. And yet, he's now going to throw us out for wearing the wrong robes. Now, I think for help in understanding this, we need to turn to Paul in his letter to the Colossians. And Paul writes about taking off our clothes and putting on new ones. He describes us stripping off our old practices, like anger, wrath, greed, hatred, and violence, and clothing ourselves in new ones, like compassion, kindness, humility, and patience. 
And he ends up saying, here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all, it is in all. And there again, Paul is emphasizing the fact that everyone is in Christ. And it's the putting on of the new clothes, the wedding clothes, that show that you have been changed, chosen, and nothing to do with what you were before. So this brings us to the, the final line of the reading, which also causes some problems, I think. The final line says, for many are called, but few are chosen. And many see this as a denial of free will, but I think this is to understand the reading. The Father will choose all those who have chosen of their own free will to put on the new clothes. I'll say that again. God will choose all those who have chosen of their own free will to put on the new clothes he's offered us. Or as Paul says, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. So if we choose those virtues and put them on, God will choose us. So maybe this story is straightforward after all. The original invite of Jews throughout the Old Testament is rejected by many. So Jesus comes along and expands and opens that invitation to everybody, to you and I, to all people. He offers the wedding robe or the new clothes to all. And we can freely choose them. And if we do, the Father will choose us in the day of judgment. Amen. So let's just have a moment of silence while we think over what Joe has said. We put on this in place. We're conscious of putting them on every day. That is, we get up in the morning. Now we turn to, we stand to say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died on the earth. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. We will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, the life of our love. Amen. Let's sit down for our prayers for the session. Our Father, who art Let us pray to God, the Lord of the harvest, that he will bring to fruition all that he desires for his creation. Lord of creation, we see that the fields are ripe for harvest. We pray for your church, that it may be ready to gather fruit for eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church. For Justin, our Archbishop, for Tim, David, and Debbie Abishams, for our Archdeacon Richard, and for our own ministry team, for their leadership and encouragement, for their examples as faithful witnesses to Christ. And we remember parishes who lack our resources and good fortune, those who are struggling during this pandemic. 
Father, we ask for prayers for all your church, but especially those places which need particular help at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have created the universe by your eternal word and have blessed humankind in giving us dominion over the earth. We pray for the world that we may honor and share its resources and live in reverence for the creation and in harmony with one another. We pray for world leaders, for our own government, that it may be guided by wisdom and justice for everyone. We think of places facing disruption, for Belarus, for Hong Kong, and for the USA facing a bitterly contested election and for our own negotiations with the EU. We can continue to pray for peace in our world, for a better understanding between nations, for places in our world in conflict, for the people of Syria and Yemen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Your Son has promised that the Spirit will lead us into all truth, we pray for the community in which you have sent us, for one another and for ourselves, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have given your people a rich land, yet by sin we have made a world of suffering and sorrow. We pray for those who bear the weight of affliction, that they may come to share the life of wholeness and plenty. So we pray for all whom we know that are in need. And we bring to you the work of the night shelter and the basics bank, and for all those who depend on help from these organizations. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Your Son, Jesus Christ, is the first fruit of the resurrection and will reap the harvest of the dead at the end of time. We pray that he will gather us all together with those who have gone before in the banquet of the age to come. We pray especially at this time for the families and friends of Jim Glasper, Charlie Bull, Roshan and Pierre. And in a moment of quiet, let us bring those on our hearts and minds to God's mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Source of all life and giver of all that is good, hear our prayers and grant us all that is in accordance with your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Peace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you 
with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit. Send your Holy Spirit. The broken bread and wine I pour may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to him. He said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us into your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen.
And say together the prayer of the communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be our living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, it's been very wonderful to you and celebrate communion in St John's again after so many months um, and so um, thank you for everyone who's organized it thank you Joe for your, your preaching thank you Tony for your singing which I thought was splendid and um, we are going to continue our pattern of services it's this time of year when things tend to get um, rather more exciting for me um, we get into we break into a bit of a trot as remembrance comes up and then um, by the time we get to Christmas, we're in a full sort of gallop, basically. <laughs> so, so um, Remembrance Sunday is going to be slightly complicated this year in that we've obviously got a limit of the number of people that we can um, have at the main service. And so we're, we're giving priority to the members of the Royal British Legion at that service, which will be held at St. Mary's East. Um, but we will be doing a little bit more um, at each of the um, memorials of the Acts of Remembrance uh, than we would normally do. And Joe is working on some, some uh, mischief for that. So we're going to make a little bit more of that. But in the evening, uh, we also have um, a, um, an even song, a sung even song at St. Swithin's Last Worthy. And um, Tim Tyler and his um, the, the rather reduced version of the choir, socially distanced, is going to be. Um, singing even song on the evening so if you can't get into the service in the morning um, it will be on zoom we hope um camera camera um, uh, willing and chris chris managing to uh, deal with that uh, in the toilet the technical problems but there will also be this even song service as well and so that's going to be um remember it's okay. we are still working out what on earth we're going to do about christmas <laughs> um, because we would normally have 200 people at um, St. Mary's Eastern and 120 people on, um, on Christmas Day. <laughs> and we are thinking as to whether we can have all four churches having a service on Christmas Day at the same time and it being linked up with, um, group, um, with screens and Zoom and everything. Um, but we will see whether that we're going to be discussing that. So please pray for us as we come into this new season because it's going to be 
quite a challenging one. But we're very fortunate to have lots of people who've got technical expertise, um, and we've also got lots of people who are able to do services as well. So um, I think we'll get there. Any other notices that we should? So now we're going to stand and sing our final hymn, which is Guide Me, O Thou Great Repeat. serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.